And you got fired because of being too funny. Not for being late, not for smoking, not for cussing too much. You know who gave me the most rules as a headliner? Don't do this, don't say this, don't do no. that. T.K. Kirkland. Really? T to the mother doesn't K. Why he do that? Why? Well, because a lot of comedians, headliner comedians thing is they don't want to work hard. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gonna talk. If I wasn't gonna make it doing this, we're gonna make it doing nothing else. Then I get a phone call from my man, Derek Keenum. Shout out to Derek Keenum. He said, hey man, I'm writing for WBLS for Earthquake's radio show, because he was featuring for Earthquake at the time. We got a radio segment, and they need some quick little one-liners. I know you're good at them. Send me a couple of them. I just text about four or five of them, send them in. Turns into a writing job for Earthquake's first radio show. Mm. The Quake comes to Dallas. Derek can't make it. I fill in for Quake. Right then at that same moment, Derek stops featuring for Quake. Quake needs a feature. You. Proved myself that weekend. Hey, young, you want to go on the road with me? Three years in a row, I'm on the road with Earthquake. Wow. By featuring for Quake, I meet all the OGs. But by also, Earthquake was the first time, because everybody else, I got fired. I would do two or three shows and get fired for being Why? too funny. They don't want you to take their spotlight. You not real? You not here to be funny. Faison, Cat, I mean, uh, Faison say Cat Williams pushed him away from the show because he thought he couldn't. <laughs> He could come behind Faison. Faison tells me this, and I understand what you're saying now because he's saying, he that nigga can't go behind me. Our shit came from uh, us going to trying to put a tour together and um, him, him thinking that I was not going to be funny. So where Amber is... Mm -hmm. He, you know, he's like, okay, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, okay, but I'm, I'm, okay, yeah, nigga, but I've been doing this before you, nigga. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, I can tell you, I was on stage, with Robin Harris, Damon Wayne's, we had to bring it, and what happened was I was smashing him. You know what I'm saying? He couldn't follow me for sure. So that's where it really came from. The honest. He was like, oh, so he thought he was going to fuck with my money. I'm like, no, you're not going to do that either. You're not going to do that. He didn't know what he was dealing with. The first comedian to ever give me love for being funny was Rodney Perry. The first uh -huh. comedian to, to, to promote me from the, the host spot to the feature spot because the host couldn't even get his credits right was Lil Rel. Mm. Those were the first two dudes to actually give me a, a stamp of a validation stamp. when it came to working at the white people comedy clubs. So the white comedy clubs would never book me because I wouldn't go through their process. That's why I say I don't encourage nobody to take my route. What is their process? I, I, I did it the bar and grill, legends, real time, brick house lounge. I'm going to the black clubs. Right. I'm doing black comedy. Uh -huh. The white but club comedy route. But isn't that normally route, what no black comedians normally do? That's what black comedians normally did. Okay. So just because you black skin don't make you a black comedian. That's why you'll have black comedians that you've never heard of take mm -hmm. off. Because they were mainstream comedians. They worked the white rooms. They went to the white clubs. So when you go to Hyenas or the Improv on Open Mic Night, they'd have a stand, uh, sign up sheet about 40, 50 names long. No matter what time you showed up, the person there decides where you where you're going. Mm -hmm. So they don't fuck with you. They're going to put you on fourth block, which is the last 10 names. Wow. So you might get there 7 p.m. to sign up. You ain't going on till 1 in the morning. Mm. And I did this week after week, even though I'm the funniest dude in the room. Another thing they would do, the gatekeepers. So while the club is full of people that came to see a comedy show, they're going to put their friends up, mm -hmm. bombing their ass off. They just couldn't joke their way out of a one-stall bathroom. Have you ever seen somebody get booed off stage? Absolutely. He been booed off stage. No. But he bombed. Yes. Okay. But not booed. But not booed. And damn sure not off stage. <laughs> <laughs> No, that, that's giving up. That's real. That's yeah. giving up. And I, I, I'm going to do my time. You're going to have to cut my mic off before mm -hmm. I walk off stage. I will never let the boo, I will never let the crowd ruin my check. I'm booked to do a certain amount of time. I'm going to do my time. Now, you're not 
I, I wasn't booked for you to like me. I was booked to do my time. Right. So the only way I can get my money is if I do all of my time. Oh, okay. That's mm-hmm. real. So That's I'm learning now. Mm-hmm. Let's go. So that's when you start to get afraid because it's all about paying bills. So the next time you get a, a feature opportunity, it's bad enough that clubs don't fuck with you. It's bad enough that you don't play their game because you realize that it's rigged. Mm-hmm. So you're making a name for yourself and you're going around the country building relationships with these comics without doing it their, the white folks way. Mm-hmm. So then when these headliners come to town, they telling the club, no, I want Black Run to feature for me. So now the club got to break Have down to. and call me. Yeah. Which is why I would be fourth or fifth or sixth on the call list when the, when the headliner would say, I, I need a black comedian to open for me. Even though black is my first name and my stage name, I'm number six or seven on the list, even though I'm at the top of the heap as, as far as skill. Is that why you named yourself Black Run? Well, yeah, because I'm proud of myself. But I named myself Black Run because when I was in the hood, living my hood life, everybody called me black. Okay. And then when I would be doing my corporate life, everybody would call me Run. So my dichotomy is both of those. Mm-hmm. So I'm I'm black to some and I'm run to others. I'm black run to everybody. Got it. So working with Quake, Quake see me on stage half stepping. He pulled me to the side in the dressing room. He said, Hey young, when I first saw you in Dallas, this ain't what I saw. Mm. I said, Well, OG, I was doing a guest spot in Dallas. I never thought I would be working with you. He said, You say that to say what? I say, man, I'm just trying to play my part. He say, I ain't one of them cats. I didn't bring you here to, to pity pat the, the, the room. I didn't bring you here to pacify the audience. I and brought that you was here. because of what had happened previously. Yes, ma'am. When you got fired because of being too funny. Not for being late, not for smoking, not for cussing too much. You know gave me the most rules as a headliner? Don't do this, don't say this, don't do no. that. Don't. T.K. Kirkland. Really? T to the mother thudding K. Why he do that? Why? Well, because... A lot of comedians, headliner comedians thing is they don't want to work hard. And some of them don't want to overrun the room. So if he going to do a whole bunch of sex jokes, he going to do a whole bunch of bitching and hoeing. He going to do a whole he bunch of... He don't want you to do He don't want thing. you to do it too because now the crowd is ran down. They, they, they've heard right. too much of that. So his jokes lose their sting if that was your material too, especially if you're going to be on stage for 30 minutes before him. But do you think that makes sense? It makes a whole lot of right. sense. But at the same time, it, it also comes from a place of fear, if you ask me. Because if your material was strong, it don't matter what you was talking about on stage before me. I don't care if you set a dog on fire right in front, right before you said my name. The minute the song plays and I go up there, I'm finna erase that whole chalkboard and teach a new lesson. That's just my take on it. Mm. And I learned that from the OGs and the dogs that I worked with from Quake and then from then on. Mm-hmm. Quake say, man, I didn't bring you here to pussyfoot. I brought you here to push me. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to work, work a new special. I'm trying to get a new hour together. I need you to push me. Mm-hmm. So then I started going on stage dogging it. So then I'm sitting in the back, and because I'm an Earthquake fan, I'm watching his show every show. And you saw the way how you pushed him. You saw that. I saw where I pushed him, and then I also saw ways like, oh, to oh, gee, if you didn't say it like this, but if you said it like that, I think you might have a stronger response from the crowd. So you were Because I'm a him. student of the game. So I'm starting to punch his jokes up. And at first he's like, young nigga, who are you to give me a punch up? And then he say, I, I'm, I, I texted to him. He said, spit it to me. You know, don't, don't write it to me. Say it to me how mm-hmm. it should be said. And I told him to joke the way he should say it. And he slapped the steering wheel. And he said, boy, you got something. And that night, in his set, he told the joke my way instead of his way. And everybody cracked up. When he got the response, he looked off stage and looked at me and nodded his head. I didn't know I had just got hired. <laughs> I just thought I got validated. Like, yeah, nigga, that was funny. Mm-hmm. From that mo- moment on, then I became a trusted counsel. So when he would write a joke, he, young, what you think about about this? this. And that's validation right there. When the OG, a man who been doing this long, as as long as you've been alive, but who been professionally doing this, as long as you've been knowing what stand-up is, now values your opinion, all the rest of you local niggas can't tell me nothing. Mm -hmm. So from that, when he would introduce me to people, this is my young gunner. He write for me. And you know, a lot of comedians won't even tell that. No. Just like musicians and entertainers, 
according to them, they they write everything. That's ego. So true greatness has no problem acknowledging the people who help you make be great. Henry Ford had that concept. That's right. I'm going to put myself in a room full of great people and what comes from that, we are going to be, you know what I'm saying? That's what they say. Mm-hmm. The sum is greater than its individual parts. Right. If you surround yourself with great people, y'all going to make something that's greater than any one of y'all could have ever did individually. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we going to talk.